MD Prepper here. I'm going to teach you guys how to make some homemade wine. Let's also shout out to Ziva for Freedom, who wanted me to teach her something she didn't know. I'm going to do my darndest to teach you to turn boring old apple juice into very tasty, very beautiful, and very nutritious apple wine. Now I'm going to go ahead and assume you've already got your basic wine making kit and have read up on it, have your basic chemicals and all that. So let's just jump right into it. You're going to need one gallon of apple juice. It needs to be 100% apple juice. No extra added sugar, no extra preservatives, chemicals in this, just apple juice. This is the White House brand. I bought this at local store for $5, $5.50, something like that. You can use whole apples, but it takes 14 to 16 pounds of those. Not worth the effort. Start here, guys. We're prepping. We're trying to do things on the cheap. So, White House or the store brand, as long as there's nothing else in it. So, take that. Take your primary fermenter which is basically a big old bucket that you get. This is a two-gallon one that I prefer. Make one and two-gallon batches. Make sure you go ahead and clean this inside with your rinse solution that you're going to get with your winemaking kit so there's no extra bacteria or yeast in here to screw things up for your fermentation. Dump your apple juice right back in there. Go ahead and add one Camden tablet, crushed, into that solution. The Camden's going to kill off any bacteria or yeast that's growing in there, any kind of contaminants that's in this or the rest of your ingredients. You're getting a clean start. Uh, you're also going to need one tablet of this at the end as well. Go ahead and add half teaspoon per gallon of pectin enzyme. That is going to keep the apples and the apple juice from browning, as apples have a tendency to do. You don't want that to affect the color or the flavor of your wine, so add that. And you're also going to need one pound of granulated sugar per gallon. Now, one pound of sugar is equal to two and a quarter cups. Remember that measurement. One pound, two and a quarter cups. You're going to use that throughout the winemaking process no matter what you're making. So measure that out. Don't eyeball it. Get it right. You're going to get better results. Now, technically, with your load up right here, all mixed together in your bucket, all stirred together, that's called the must. Now, you could stop right there, wait 24 hours and add your yeast, and you could have a very cheap, efficient apple wine. There's some other ingredients beyond just the yeast. This is the basics. Kick it up a notch, okay? Do the little extra steps here, you're going to get much, much better wine. And I'll list all the ingredients down below in the comments section. Um, in addition to these, you need to add one and a half teaspoons of acid blend, one quarter teaspoon of tannin, and one teaspoon of yeast nutrient. That's going to get you the best quality overall apple wine. And again, these things are cheap. You should already have them in your kit when you buy things. But go ahead and I'll mix all that together in your primary fermenter. When that's mixed together, before you add the yeast, it's called the must, M-U-S-T. When you've got all that ready in your primary fermenter, cover it up, let it still be exposed to oxygen, don't put your airlock on or anything, and let it sit for 24 hours. Let this Camden tablet get its job done. Nuke everything in there before you start out. Then go ahead and, after 24 hours, you take your yeast, whatever type you want to use. Uh, there's all sorts of various types you can use for apple wine. This is Pasteur Champagne. I've had very good success with that in the past. Cut this open. Pour it over the must. That's it. You do not have to activate this. This isn't bread yeast. Some people recommend that. I've done it just by sprinkling it over the top, and I've never had a problem with it with any type of yeast I've used. So just pour this over the top. Um, this whole recipe is for one gallon. Uh, the only thing you don't increase per gallon is the yeast. One packet of yeast will do up to five gallons of wine. Could you split this up in multiple batches? You could. I'd just go ahead and pour the whole thing in there. I'd rather have too much yeast than too little. Too much isn't going to hurt you. Too little might. So... Pour this over the top, put your top back over your primary fermenter, and leave it three to five days. Now, we can get the specific gravities and all that nonsense. I don't. I don't care that much. I'm just trying to eyeball this. You know, I may not have all those tools and that gear available. I let it sit three to five days. After 24 hours, you lift the lid, you're going to see the fermentation. Uh, they generally recommend you stir it every 24 hours. I don't even do that. I just let it sit. After about four days, maybe five, I turn around and I put it in my secondary fermenter. You can siphon that off, or you can put a funnel in here at the top and some cheesecloth and pour it in. As long as all that's been sterilized in your clean rent solution, etc. Um, pour it in here. Attach your airlock. Do not forget to add some water about halfway into that airlock. Otherwise, it's not going to be a real airlock. And you let this sit. Minimum three weeks. What I recommend is you take some uh, masking tape and a Sharpie. Put the type of wine, your ingredients, and the start date on here. And let it sit. Minimum three weeks. I usually go four to five just because I get busy and I forget about it. Uh, forget about it's a good thing. The longer it sits there, the better it's going to be. You can't let it sit there too long as long as you've got that airlock attached. No problem. It's not going to oxidize. It's not going to ruin on you and turn into vinegar. That's a problem a lot of hobo wines have. They let it sit for too long and they say, this thing tastes like vinegar. Yeah, I'm looking at you, I owned you, noob. 
Yeah, it does taste like vinegar, because it is vinegar. You have an airlock, don't do the balloon trick. Go ahead and buy the cheap airlocks. I got a buck fifty, something like that. And once it's sat there for three weeks, four weeks, you can check the specific gravity. It's going to be about 1.00. That's when fermentation's done. You can just drink it straight up if you want to bottle it. Add an extra Camden tablet before you bottle and rack it. Uh, that's going to kill off any extra yeast in there, just so you don't continue fermentation and pop your corks. Then you rack your wine, put it in the bottles, or what I prefer, these little easy cap versions for cider uh, and apple wine, just because it's not going to age. You're not going to sit around a long time. It's going to be drunk through quickly. And these smaller bottles, you can give around. You can give more of these out, and if your friends like them, or if they don't, well, you're not out as much. You get a bad review on them, well, you didn't waste a whole bottle of wine. One gallon of wine, or our standard little sizing that I'm going to be teaching you guys on, is roughly five bottles of wine. I tend to get more like four and a half, uh, so I keep a few of these around, uh, even when I do fully bottle my wine in proper 750 ml bottles. I do like these easy caps for things like apple wine and ciders that I'm not going to drink or not going to store for a long time. They work real well, real quick and easy, just not for long-term storage. But anyway, you want to bottle it, bottle it up. There's your apple wine. Your alcohol content, depending on your yeast, is going to be anywhere between 13 and 18 percent. The yeast I tend to yield, use rather, yield a 16 to 18 percent alcohol, which is awesome. This stuff kicks butt. It's clean, it's smooth, it's very good. If you don't add all the extra pieces and parts like I told you in the second half, it's going to be fairly flat if you just use this. But it's drinkable. This is fine. Take the extra step, guys. You won't regret it. Indie Prepper out.